Hello, everyone, and welcome to USMLE Domination Series Week 17. We have a great tutorial here. This is part three of our arthritis series. So let's go ahead and get right to it. So this is the high yield question. We have a 67 year old male presenting with acute right wrist pain and swelling. His x-ray is shown below. Synovial analysis of crystals would reveal which of the following under polarized light. Would the crystals be needle shaped with negative birefringence, needle shaped with positive birefringent, rhomboid shape with negative birefringent or rhomboid shape with positive birefringent. And the, it's based off of this X-ray of the wrist right here. Give you a few moments to ponder about that. And we'll come back to this question at the end of the series. So what I wanna talk about today is the crystal deposition diseases. And by that, I mean gout, CPPD or calcium pyrophosphate deposition disease, also known as pseudo gout clinically and hydroxyapatite deposition disease, also known as calcific tendinitis. These are the three major crystal deposition diseases that you may come across on the USMLE. So in terms of gout, gout is a disease that affects mainly older men, right? You know, in some cases, people report a 20 to one prevalence of men to women. That's a very uh, strong and profound preponderance of men over women. And typically it's a uh, middle age to older men that present with gout. Gout uh, is due to hyperuricemia with increased uric acid levels. It's due to monosodium uric deposition around joints that leads to destruction of the joint over time. It's an inflammatory arthropathy where you'll get erosions. Uh, really any joint in the body can be involved, but characteristically when people have podagra or a, an acute gouty flare, it's usually the first MTP joint that's involved in the foot as it is in this case. And we'll talk about what the imaging findings are. Uh, and typically, you know, to diagnose gout, really you need to do synovial fluid analysis and you're looking for uh, needle shaped crystals that are negatively birefringent under polarized light. That's the key uh, to the diagnosis of gout. And radiographically, although it can involve any joint, typically the first MTP joint is characteristically involved. And in. what you get are these really punched out, well-defined uh, erosions with sclerotic margins and overhanging edges like you see here, right? The erosions and gout are very well-defined. And what we mean by juxtarticular is, is they're right outside of the joint. So notice that the erosion, this is the first MTP joint right here. The erosion is appearing just outside the joint, not really in the joint, but right around and outside the joint along the first metatarsal head. That's a really characteristic feature of gout that we don't see in many other inflammatory arthropathies. So this concept of juxtarticular erosion or an erosion outside of the joint space. The other finding that you can see is, uh, this soft tissue swelling or soft tissue tophi. And there's a punctate calcification that you can see here. Uh, sometimes the crystal deposits can happen in the soft tissues. And in this case, it's along the, the, the soft tissue uh, around the first metatarsal. So this is a calcified tophi in the setting of gout. Now, again, gout can involve any joint in the body. It's one of those peculiar arthropathies that can involve any joint, but characteristically, you know, the foot is involved. Sometimes the carpal metacarpal joints in the, uh, in the wrist and the hand can be involved, but really any joint can be involved in gout. Typically, we treat this with NSAIDs, uh, steroids, colchicine, but chronic gout is usually treated with allopurinol, okay? So that's uh, what gout will look like on the USM lead. Moving on to CPBD or calcium pyrophosphate deposition. Uh, Pseudogout is just a clinical term for an acute uh, CPBD flare. Uh, again, it presents with you know pain, swollen joint that's red. The, the, the presentation is gonna be similar or almost identical to gout. Uh, so the, the clinical presentation isn't necessarily going to help you, but typically this occurs in older individuals, male or female, anyone that's greater than 50 years old. If it occurs in someone that's younger than 50 years old, uh, like someone who's 40 or 30, then you want to consider a secondary cause for the, the pseudogout or the CPPD arthropathy, something like hemochromatosis, hyperparathyroidism. That's, a, that's something that can be associated with pseudogout. The, the primary form is the idiopathic form where we have no real known cause, but the secondary form is usually a result of some other systemic disease such as hyperparathyroidism or uh, hemochromatosis or even Wilson's disease or something like that. So, you know, it most commonly involves the knee, which is what I'm showing you here, but it can involve typically the wrist and the hands, which I'll get into in a second. But one of the characteristic findings is this, you know, this calcification known as chondrocalcinosis, okay? Uh, this is calcification of the hyaline articular cartilage. Notice that the calcification here conforms to the shape of the meniscus or the hyaline cartilage around the knee. Uh, this is a finding that's seen characteristically in CPBD. It can be seen in other arthropathies as well, 
but it's characteristically seen in pseudo gout or CPPD arthropathy, uh, this notion of chondral calcinosis. And typically, you're going to get degenerative type of changes. So, you know, joint space loss, subchondral sclerosis, cystic change, osteophytes. There may be some erosive element to it too, but more commonly you get degenerative type of changes. Now, this is what it would look like in the wrist. Again, you have this chondral calcinosis here in the TFCC, this space here between the ulna. This here is the radius. This is the ulna. These are the carpal bones. There's something called a TFCC or the triangular fibrocartilaginous complex that runs here, right? Uh, notice that again, this cartilage um, along the you know, fibrocartilage is coating the, uh, you know, the, the, the shape of the TFCC. And another finding here is, is that CPPD arthropathy characteristically results in degenerative type of changes along the radiocarpal joint. So you can see some osteophytes here. In this case, it's at the distal radial ulnar joint, but you can also see joint space loss and subchondral sclerosis at the radiocarpal joint. You may also have second and third MCP joint involvement in the hand with characteristic hook-like osteophytes. That's another characteristic finding of CPPD arthropathy. In the knee, uh, you can also have chondrocalcinosis, but usually the degenerative changes are more pronounced in the patellofemoral compartment versus the medial femoral tibial and the lateral femoral tibial compartments of the knee. Okay, that's another characteristic finding of CPPD. Uh, under synovial analysis, you're looking for rhomboid-shaped crystals, not needle-shaped crystals, but rhomboid-shaped crystals that have positive birefringence under polarized light, okay? And typically it's treated with NSAIDs, uh, glucocorticoids, steroids, or colchicine. Those are the treatments for uh, CPPD or calcium pyrophosphate deposition. So, you know, it's not monosodium urate that's being deposited, it's calcium pyrophosphate that's being deposited around the joint that's leading to, you know, destruction of the joint and arthritis of the joint long-term. Moving on to hydroxyapatite deposition disease, also known as calcific tendonitis. This typically occurs in patients between 40 and 60 years of age, usually middle-aged individuals. Females are a little bit more commonly involved than males, particularly in the shoulder. The shoulder is the most common joint involved, usually results in chronic pain uh, that occurs. And uh, the second most common place would be around the hips, around where the gluteal tendons insert onto the greater trochanter. But usually you get calcification that gets deposited. It's hydroxyapatite calcification that gets deposited around joints. So around joints, like in tendons, ligaments, bursae. So notice that there's this large globular amorphous calcification uh, that's right here adjacent to the greater tuberosity of the humerus. This is where all the rotator cuff tendons insert, right? Or three out of the four. Supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor insert onto the greater uh, tuberosity here. So you get calcification, amorphous calcification or periarticular calcification around the tendons and around the bone where the tendons insert. So very characteristic for uh, hydroxyapatite deposition disease or calcific tendonitis can be very painful for patients. Usually the treatment is supportive. Uh, we can give NSAIDs as well. And we can also actually do an ultrasound guided lavage and aspiration where we break the calcifications in real time and suction and aspirate those calcifications <clears throat> in real time. So that's a nice example of calcific tendonitis. So the US assembly must know points for the exam. So for gout, the type of crystal that's being deposited is monosodium urate typically happens again in men, right? That's the key, middle-aged men. They're not really gonna show you a female on the USMLE presenting with gout. The imaging findings are juxtaarticular erosions, as I showed you, soft tissue tophi. And remember the great toe at the first MTV joint is the most common place to get gout. We treat this typically with NSAIDs, steroids, colchicine, allopurinol is used more for chronic treatment of gout. And the key on the USMLE is looking for the gender of men and needle-shaped crystals with negative birefringence under polarized light. Pseudogout or calcium pyrophosphate deposition disease typically occurs in older people, greater than 50 years of age, a male or a female. Now, again, if it's a younger person, you want to look for a systemic cause like hyperparathyroidism or hemochromatosis. You're looking for chondrocalcinosis, degenerative type of changes, particularly in the knee. The knee is the most common place to get uh, pseudogout. And the treatment is NSAIDs, steroids, and colchicine. The pearls on the USMLE is an older patient with rhomboid crystals on synovial analysis with positive birefringence, right? So um, positive, right? So um, very, very important. And then calcific tendonitis, also known as hydroxyapatite deposition disease, is calcium hydroxyapatite being deposited around joints. Typically, it's middle-aged individuals, females, slightly less, slightly more common, excuse me, than males. And you're looking for periarticular globular amorphous calcification as a sodium adjacent to the shoulder, which is the most common place to get it typically treated conservatively with NSAIDs, ultrasound guided lavage is also possible. And on the USMLE, it's usually a middle-aged individual. These crystals are very small. They're much smaller compared to the pseudogout and gouty crystals. And there's no birefringence under polarized light for cal 
calcific tendonitis. So coming back to the high yield question, the 67 year old male presents with acute right wrist pain and swelling. His x-ray is shown below. So know the analysis of crystals would reveal which of the following under polarized light. So first of all, this is an older individual, 67 years old. If we look at the wrist, we see chondrocalcinosis here in the TFCC. And then we have degenerative changes that are you know, pronounced at the radiocarpal joint, right? Osteoarthritis doesn't really involve the radiocarpal joint. So we have joint space loss, subchondral sclerosis. This is a nice look for what calcium pyrophosphate deposition would look like. So again, we know that the synovial analysis was going to reveal rhomboid-shaped, positively birefringent crystals. So D is the right answer here. Thank you so much for your attention. Uh, please join us next week for another super high-yield USM lead domination.